thinking about picking up an Epiphone with P90 pickups, will it sound as good as some of the more expensive guitars with these kinds of pickups in it? We're going to find out today right here on Geargasms. Hi kids, welcome to Geargasms. I'm your host Alan Barnes. If you're new to this channel, please like and subscribe. But meanwhile, what we have today is the ES339 by Epiphone. And in case you didn't notice, they make sure they put the Epiphone brand right there on the pit guard so you can't even fool your rich, snobby friends and make them think you've got a Gibson cover up the headstock somehow. They put the big E of shame right there on the front. But I really, really were attracted to a couple of things about this guitar. First of all, the Pelham Blue finish. Oh my God, amazing. I wanted something with P90 pickups. I wanted a semi-hollow guitar. I didn't have one. So these things, I wanted a Pelham Blue guitar. We'll get into playing this guitar and talking all about it. But first, the data. Epiphone branded P90 pickups. Two volume, two tone. Pickup switch. Rosewood fingerboard. I believe it's a maple body. I'm sure it's a laminate. Maple or mahogany neck. Not sure which. Rosewood fingerboard. Bound fretboard. The binding is just lovely. It's kind of a yellowish. Epiphone tuners. Clouson style. But the Pelham Blue is almost a sparkle finish. It's absolutely gorgeous. Alright, let's play it with a track. On my phone here, controlling the Line 6 Amplify, I have some of the worst backing tracks in the history of backing tracks. But I bought them years and years ago on CD. I didn't scrape them off YouTube. So there should be no content ID, at least with the backing track producers. Let's see if YouTube can figure out that this is Carlos Santana. <laughs> Using the Line 6 Amplify amp for this segment, and it's not a bad amp, but the app that controls the amp, the Bluetooth connection is flaky as <laughs> All right, we tried to play this with the Line 6 Amplify, a million takes, all of them blown, so we're just going to play this thing naked. You spell that N E K K I D, naked. So I'll give you a quick tour of, of what this baby can do. Neck pickup, sort of a dirty Marshall tone. These P90s really sing. Tone all the way down, rhythm pickup. pickups together. Now you got to move your arms around a lot when you play. That's a pro tip from me to you kids. Be really flouncy with it. Is that a word? Swan-like. Do swans have arms? Not sure. The bridge pickup.
Now, I threw that cord in there, the wrong thing, on purpose, just to screw up YouTube's content ID system, because I am a gangster. Before I forget, it's t-shirt shout-out time. Le Fou Fighters. The reason I picked that shirt is because this here guitar looks a lot like Dave's Trini Lopez-based Gibson model. I love the Pelham Blue. It kind of has that vibe. Of course, we have Kurt Cobain on the window. You might think he looks a little bit forlorn, but I think he looks a little bit salty because not only was he about writing songs about depressing things, he could see into the future, and that's why he was so depressed. He could see that the Foo Fighters were going to sell way more records than Nirvana ever did. We're going to do some clean running through. Let me pick out a really nice clean tone with the app here, Amplify Line 6. how the pickups get sort of a spanky kind of tone which you, you sort of expect more from a single coil these pickups in this thing are actually pretty sweet of course it's a hollow body so you have got to be wondering to yourself does it do the 50s kind of thing middle position isn't a Nirvana song, but it's kind of grungy. Oh, I, I, I'm still alive in oh, I'm still alive Thank you, Eddie Vedder, for begetting Scott Stapp. Thanks a lot. Now, one thing I like about this guitar, besides the P90s, overall, I gotta say that the workmanship on this thing was very, very good. The finish is just about perfect. There's no paint overspray. The nut, ironically, is cut better than a large number of Gibsons that have come out of the factory in recent years, although I hope they've turned that around. The intonation is almost perfect on this thing. I do need to adjust the bridge height a little bit. I think the strings are a little bit too high for me. And when I first got the guitar shipped like that, that's always a red flag to me because sometimes the, the less expensive guitar manufacturers uh, pull the bridges up a little bit, set the action a little bit high because it hides a lot of sins. The number one sin that, that hides are uneven frets, so you don't get the buzzing with the bridge a little bit higher. But I'm not sure that it's the case with this one. Eyeballed it, it's great. The only thing I'll say that, that's not super great about it is the fret edges. It almost feels a little cheese grater, kind of. It almost feels like fret sprout. I've never had a guitar with a rosewood fingerboard, mahogany neck, and a bound bound fingerboard ever have the fret sprout. It's normally a thing with maple. So I don't know if I need to just go over these with a file a little bit, dress the fret ends a little bit. It's trickier though when you have binding. You have to be really careful, tape things up, be, have a really, really soft touch. Takes a lot of time, so I don't know how much into that I'm going to get. But I'll show you with just sort of a dirty tone some of the lead stuff you can get. It's pretty sweet. A lot of things with the P90s people are a little bit afraid of. 
because it's basically a single coil. They can be noisy, but a lot of times people sort of feel like that they're going to be a little underpowered, a little weak as far as sustain. But this thing has really nice sustain. Not forever sustain, but but decent. And last but not least, for those of you out there that are afraid if you get a guitar like this, you're not still going to be able to do all your metal, weedly, weedly, twingity, twangity, gent, whatever kind of stuff. These P90s will go. <laughs> So you can still do all that really, really stupid shit. Now a couple of things that I didn't really dig about this besides the fret sprout. One problem is this here volume pot for the neck pickup, it's kind of loose. In other words, the thing that keeps, you can feel it when you turn it all the way off or all the way on, if you keep spinning it, the pot that's on the other side of this wood will keep spinning it around. Normally it's not too big of a deal. You just open up the back cavity, you hold that thing steady, but with a hollow body, I'm not sure how I'm going to get my fingers in there. They're too big. Maybe I can find somebody with really skinny ones or whatever. So I think, I think as I put my finger in there, I can feel the back of that pot. So maybe I can tighten that one up, but it does kind of scare me and it always uh, puts me off of the hollow bodies because I, I do... I don't like to work on them, but I'm able to if I need to. And then these, I'm just not really sure how you would do things and, and how you would get your hands under here, like if this switch was a problem and you wanted to pop it out. I'm sure it could be done. People do it. But with this type design, if I needed something like that done, I'd probably have to take it somewhere. Well, kids, what did we learn today? We learned that Epiphone still makes a whole hell of a lot of guitar for not a whole hell of a lot of money. It just plays and sounds way way more expensive than it is these guitars punch way above their weight as always thank you for your time don't forget to like and subscribe please tell a friend if you like this channel i'm alan barnes saying whatever you do we certainly hope we'll see you again here next week on geargasm